Okay, so in this video, we'll be going through an RLC circuit, which is a circuit that consists of a resistor, inductor, and a capacitor. So we'll start off with our AC waveform, the resistor, and capacitor. Let me make that a bit neater. That's not that much better, but it's better, right? So let's go with a 10 volt um, supply, and we'll go with one kilohertz. Let's go with standard 1K resistor. We'll go with a 10 millihenry inductor and we'll go with a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Cool, okay. So let's calculate, let's go with the voltage. Sorry, let's go with the voltage across each component, right? We'll also calculate the current uh, and phase. Okay, and then we'll finally draw a phasor diagram. Okay, so for us to calculate the current, we, we're going to need to to calculate the total impedance, right? Sticking to basic Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. So once we've got the impedance, then we can get the total current. Once we've got the total current, then we can multiply each of the reactants of the resistor, of the inductor, and of the capacitor with the current and then that will give us the voltage across each of the various different components. And then after that, we can then draw the phasor diagram. All right, so total impedance is calculated by the resistor plus J, and then we've got X, L, minus X, C. So we already know that our resistor is 1K, and let's work out our X, C. So X, L is just simple, 2 pi F, L, and X is 1 over 2 pi F, so uh, let's get our calculator. So we've got, we'll do XL first. We've got 2 pi times by 1000, which is the kilohertz. And then we've got a multiplier by the Henry's, which is 0 0.01. And then that gives us 62.83 ohms. Okay. And now same for the capacitor, 1 over 2 pi times 1,000 times capacitance. So this is 0 0.1 microfarad, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros, and then a 1. And then that gives us 1591.55. I mean, we could just round that to 1592, so let's just do that. 1592, there you go. Okay, so now we can then just do J and we can complete our impedance equation here. So we've now got XL, which is 62.83. I mean, again, could just round it up to 63. Let's just do that. You don't have to round, you can just leave it as is, but I can't be bothered writing out all the decimal points all the time. So you've got 63 minus 1592, and that gives you then an impedance of 1K. Plus, forgive me, I'm going to use my calculator, 63 minus 1592, and that gives us plus J1529. The correction there is that that should obviously be a minus now, because we've got minus 1592. And there you have it, that's our impedance equation. Now for us to calculate our current, we're going to need to, obviously current is equal to voltage divided by impedance. So if we're going to be dividing by impedance, we don't want to be dividing by the impedance in its rectangular form. That's going to be a huge headache. So what we want instead is to convert it into polar form. So let's do that. All right, so to get the magnitude part of the polar form, what we need to do is we need to take the square root of 1K squared plus 1529 squared. And that's going to get the magnitude. And then for us to get the angle, we're going to take tan to the minus 1 multiplied by 1529 over 1000. And that's going to give us the angle. Okay. So let's get a calculator. So we've got 1000 squared plus 1529 squared. And then we take the square root of that. And that gives us, oops, up here. And that gives us 1826.9, so 1827 ohms. 
Now let's get our phase shift. So we do tan to the negative one and then one, five, two, nine, over a thousand. And that gives us 56.8 degrees. So here we have our impedance in its polar form and then now we can easily divide. All right, so like I said, uh, current is going to be equal to the current in the circuit is going to be equal to the voltage divided by the impedance, right? So we do 10 volts at a phase shift of zero, right? Divided by 1827 ohms, and that's at a phase shift of 56.8 degrees. So when we're dividing, all we do is we just divide the 10 volts by 1827 and then we subtract zero degrees uh, from, we subtract 56.8 from zero degrees so it's super easy so 10 divided by 1827 that gives us uh, 5.47 milliamps and then zero take away 56.8 is just minus 56.8 right so I've actually just noticed a mistake here and basically what happens is it's a bad habit of mine. So when we when we're taking the mid speaker, just to go back a step, when we're finding out the polar form of the impedance, right? So here we've obviously got a minus J1529. But when you're finding out the magnitude part of the impedance, this part here, it's irrelevant whether you have a minus there or not because you're you're taking you're squaring it. So when, you, when even if you if you square a minus, it becomes a plus. So you can always just ignore the minus sign there, but you can't ignore it when it comes to the angle. So this needs to be a minus fifty six point eight. Just to drive home that point, which I mean, if you're decent at maths, you probably and you're better than me, you'd understand that. But let's just let me just show you anyways. So. Let's do this part again, right? So here, if I put it all in the square root and then I do 1000 squared and I do plus 1529 squared, that gives us 1826.97, which is what we said, right? We got 1827 basically. Now, if I take the square, the uh, do it to the minus, right? So I square, this is the actual value minus so i'm squaring minus 1529 you still get the exact same result because obviously when you square a minus two squared is four minus two squared is four right so that's why it's a bad habit of mine where i i don't bother i don't put the minus sign in i learned that from my lecture in uni but i don't put the minus sign there because it's pointless but here it's pretty much essential especially because you want to get the minus 56.8. So that's where I noticed here. I was thinking, huh? Hang on a second. It doesn't make sense. And as you progress through your studies, you would really, you would realize where I made a mistake there, but don't worry about it too much. So this needs to be minus 56.8 basically. Okay. So let's crack on then. So you've got minus 56.8. So zero minus minus 56.8 is going to be plus 56.8, right? 56.8 degrees. Okay, so with that cleared up, now that we've got our current, just gonna put this all into a different color because it's gonna start to get confusing in a little bit. So we've got our current there in the circuit. So the current in the circuit is 5.47 milliamps at an angle of 56.8. Let's find now the voltage across the resistor. That's just I times R, right? And that's going to be 5.47 milliamps times a thousand. Okay. And it's going to be, not to forget the, the phase angle, 56.8 degrees. And then it's times zero, but we're actually just adding. So the result there is 5.47 volts at an angle of 56.8. Because when, when we're multiplying polar form, we just add the angles together. So 56.8 plus zero degrees is 56.8. So we've got our 
current. We've got the voltage now across the resistor. Let's get the voltage across the inductor now. So that's going to be I times J X L. Okay, because obviously that's the reactance of the inductor. So that is going to be 5.47 milliamps at an angle of 56.8 multiplied by, and then what was the value of yeah, 63? It was 63 ohms. So multiply by 63 ohms um, and then the angle this is very important so the angle of the inductor if you remember is plus 90 degrees okay so let's do 50 uh, 5.47 will do 5.47 milliamps multiplied by 63 ohms by 63 and divide that by a thousand and so that gives us 0 0.34 volts and it's going to be at an angle of so here we're going to add these two together. So 90 degrees plus 56.8, that's going to be an angle of 146.8 degrees. Okay, so that's the voltage and the angle of the inductor. And finally, we just need to do the capacitor. So we've got the voltage across the capacitor is going to be equal to, and this is going to be I times, and this is an important point. Remember that the impedance here is minus right we're minusing this impedance over here so it's going to be i times minus j x c that's a very important important point to catch we make a lot of mistakes on that trust me when you're learning so it's going to be 5.47 milliamps for the current at an angle of 56.8 degrees and that's going to be multiplied by what was the value of the capacitance reactance uh one five nine two and that's at an angle so here's very important remember the inductor's at an angle of plus 90 degrees the capacitor is going to be at an angle of minus 90 degrees right let's make some space and so that's going to be equal to let's get our calculator 5.47 times one five nine two divided by a thousand so eight point seven zero eight let's go eight point seven one volts and it's going to be at an angle of so you're going to add fifty six point eight plus minus ninety i don't know why i can't do this in my head fifty six point eight minus ninety it's like thirty three yeah minus thirty three point two degrees and there we have it now we've got the voltage across all of the components so we found the ca the current in the circuit and we found the voltage across all of the components. All right, so here's the fun part. Let's draw the phasor diagram now. So we'll use the main voltage, this voltage here, the 10 volts supply. We'll use that as our reference voltage. So we go a line like this. We'll put V 10 volts. And then now let's go with the current. So this, this is the reason why I did it in different colors so that if you're using an iPad or you've got multiple colored pens, it's always nice to do, especially when you're drawing your phasor diagram, you can clearly easily see which is which. So let's do now our current. So our current is at an angle of 56.8. Okay, so let's draw our current. So we've got, just do the same 5.47 milliamps. So because we're using the voltage as the reference, right? So we're not going to, like if you was to try and put 5.47 milliamps on this scale, it'd be like here, right? Because we're doing milliamps, right? So 0 0.005. So we draw our current there. Then now let's do the voltage across the resistor. So we've got 5.47 volts, and that's at an angle of 56.8 because it's obviously in phase with the current. So we'll do the same exact angle, but this time stop here. 5.47 volts and that's at an angle of 56.8 and this is VR okay let's do the voltage now across the inductor so we've got a tiny voltage here of 0 0.34 at an angle of 146.8 so 146.8 is going to be you know just shy of 100, 180 is there, so 146.8 is going to be somewhere there. So, and it's a tiny, it's a tiny voltage. 
So 0 0.34. I'm just going to make this bigger. So you've got 0 0.34. And that is for VL. And then finally, we've got 8.71 volts for the voltage across the capacitor. And that's at, uh, that's lagging 33.2 degrees. So it's going to be something like that. VC at 8.71 volts and it's at 33.2 degrees. You wouldn't put the minus sign there because you're just talking purely in terms of degrees. I've actually, I need, I didn't make the 56.8 big enough there, but that's okay. All right. And so if you added those together, 56.8 plus 33.2, let's do that. 56.8 plus 33.2 and that gives you a 90 degree angle and that's it so we calculated the voltage across each of the components we found the current and the phase of the current and we drew our phaser diagram and we're done thanks for watching guys see you in the next one